Okay, thank you very much. A question for the introduction. So uh, this talk uh, will indeed be about the uh, picnic uh, signature scheme. So basically the picnic uh, is a new signature scheme that is based on uh, symmetric key algorithms. And as such, it uh, hopefully resists uh, attacks on uh, quantum computers. And in fact, PICNIC is a second round candidate in this uh, post-quantum standardization uh, project. Okay, so uh, although it is uh, uh, based on symmetric key algorithms, uh, the design of PICNIC is kind of uh, unique and it uh, is completely different uh, than uh, the classical hash-based uh, signature schemes. Okay, and because this is kind of a new and uh, interesting design, the hope is that there is uh, a lot of room for uh, optimizations uh, in the scheme, and this is work that is currently uh, going on. Okay, so the picnic team uh, um, has, uh, as you can see, many people coming from various uh, institutions. Okay, so in this work, uh, what we do is uh, uh, we're going to devise a multi-target attack on the initial uh, version of PICNIC. And uh, the attack is a bit unusual in the sense that uh, it is actually not evident uh, like standard multi-target attacks. Unlike standard multi-target attacks, it is not evident from the high-level overview of the scheme. And in fact, uh, most of the talk I'm going to describe to you how PICNIC works uh, at a kind of a detailed level because otherwise it's not really possible to understand the attack. So we're going to really dive into the design. Um, and I think this is also uh, would be kind of interesting because if you don't know how picnic works, then like I said, it's a very new and innovative design. Um, so um, in this sense, it's quite interesting. Um, and the attack, uh, like I said, it will require kind of careful analysis of uh, the internal components of uh, picnic. Um, and it turns out that it actually exploits a, weak, a weakness that exists in additional related uh, uh, schemes. And finally, this, uh, this weakness was uh, fixed in the uh, latest version of PICNIC. Okay, so as I said, uh, I will start, and actually most of this talk will be uh, just to explain to you how PICNIC works. Okay, so basically PICNIC, like in many signature schemes, um, you start by selecting a secret key, and uh, the public key uh, is just a, some function of the sec secret key, some function f. Um, and obviously, uh, you don't want the public key to leak the secret key, so this uh, f must be uh, hard to invert. And in particular, in Picnic, it is implemented by a block cipher. Okay, and what is a signature in picnic? And uh, uh, basically, an, uh, a signature is a proof that the signer knows this uh, secret key uh, or the signing key, uh, where M, the message, is embedded uh, as a nonce in the signature. Um, so um, obviously, this uh, signature or proof uh, cannot leak the secret key. You don't want it to leak the secret key, so it must be a zero knowledge proof. Okay, so let's go into a bit more details. What we're going to do is basically we're going to represent this function f. Okay, we're going to represent it as a circuit, as a Boolean circuit. We're going just uh, its implementation, and we're going to denote uh, the secret or the secret signing key or the uh, private input to the circuit by x with bits x1 up to xn. Okay, and we're going to uh, denote the output public key by y with bits y1 up to ym. Okay, so uh, the only thing that's unknown here basically in this uh, uh, picture is the input to the circuit, is the x's, right? Okay, so now what the signer wants to do is to prove in zero knowledge that they know some x uh, such that when plugged into the circuit C, evaluates to the public value of y. Okay, so this is kind of the, the goal. Okay, the main building block for doing this is going to be multi-party computation. Um, and in fact, we're going to use uh, uh, an approach for building uh, zero knowledge uh, that is called MPC in the head by Ishai et al. Okay, so let's uh, go into a bit more details. So at first, I'm going to assume that the signing and verification uh, process is an interactive 
uh, uh, process between a signer and a verifier. Okay, so uh, later we'll see how to remove the assumption. But basically, the prover or signer starts the, the process by choosing three random input shares uh, that XOR, such that their XOR is this uh, secret, uh, of, uh, secret key, or secret signing key that the signer knows. Okay, it's, go it's going to pick them at random such that their XOR uh, is equal to X. Okay, now he's going to imagine in his head that there exist uh, some three virtual players. Okay, and he's going to give each one its corresponding uh, share, this W share. And now he's going to internally run a multi-party computation among these three virtual players. Okay, and the output basically of this uh, multi-party computation is going to be the final shares, these final W states. And uh, basically, the property that uh, uh, we want uh, these Ws to uh, fulfill is that their XOR is uh, just the output of the circuit, which is the public and known uh, uh, value Y. Okay, and what we want of this uh, uh, multi-party computation, uh, we want uh, basically to preserve the following privacy requirement, such uh, that if two of these virtual players uh, combine their information, then they learn nothing about uh, this secret X. Okay, so how does this have to, how, how can we uh, actually use this uh, protocol to, to build a signature scheme? Um, so let's assume that the prover or the signer uh, run this M ran this MPC protocol. Okay, and now uh, the prover, what is going to do is going to commit to the view of each player. So what does that mean? In particular, it's going to hash the, the input of this player for each player. It's going to hash its input, its randomness that maybe uh, he, he uh, um, uh, produced, its uh, state, uh, and the messages that it sent and received. All of this is going to be called the view, and the prover is going to commit to the view by basically hashing all this. Uh, for each player, it's going to hash all these values. Okay, so we have uh, these three commitments and we're going to send them to the verifier. Okay, now the verifier chooses a challenge, which is just a number one, two, or three, and it's going to send it back to the prover or, the, or signer, and now the signer is going to reveal uh, two uh, of the views uh, to the verifier uh, of, the players, uh, of the players except player I. Okay, and now the verifier can, wh what can he do? He can check that uh, the Action that the uh, MPC computation is going, uh, has been done correctly on these uh, two players, and you can also check that the initial uh, commitments were computed correctly that the prover sent. Okay, so this is uh, basically the, the main. These are basically the main ideas uh, of the protocol. And what does this uh, protocol uh, kind of buy us? What, what the, uh, what are its properties? So first of all, it is clear that it is zero knowledge because the verifier gets to see only two out of the three uh, views of the players, okay? And therefore, by the properties of the MPC scheme, it learns nothing about this, uh, uh, this X, right? This uh, input, uh, secret input. Okay, um, uh, what about soundness? Is the proof really convincing? Well, if the prover does not know X and tries to cheat, Okay, and then uh, it is easy to see that either, either a player uh, has misbehaved or two views are inconsistent in the sense that uh, uh, messages uh, received and sent and received are not consistent. And it is e quite easy to see that the verifier can catch the cheating prover with probability one-third, at least one-third. Okay, of course, this is a very low probability and we want to amplify it, so we just repeat the process, uh, say, R times, uh, in particular, if we choose R equals 2 to uh, 219, uh, we can get sound this uh, um, pro uh, probability to be 1 minus 2 to the 128. Okay, so we get a uh, very uh, good soundness. Okay. So we said that the process, uh, we d described the process, uh, the signing process as an interactive process. Of course, a signature is not an interactive process. So we have to remove the interaction, is, and we do it actually in the standard way, such that the signer generates these uh, random challenges that the, 
verify should have been sent uh, by the fiat Shamir transform. So basically, by hashing the commitments uh, that he produced with the message. Okay, so this is the basic, uh, uh, basic idea here, and it is quite standard. So to sum up, a signature for Picnic uh, includes for each run, uh, one to R, it includes three commitments, right? The three commitments for the players, and the views of the, the full views of the two players that were opened, right? And of course, uh, the third player is not open because it will re reveal the, uh, the secret signing key. Okay, so this is basically a signature of Picnic. Okay, so now we actually have to uh, look into a bit more details. We're going to have to look into the actual implementation of the, this MPC protocol. Okay, so how is the MPC protocol of Picnic implemented? Um, basically, remember that we have this Boolean circuit C. Okay, and this Boolean circuit has several wires, and uh, basically, let's look at a particular wire with some value, let's call it A. Okay, and basically we have three players, and uh, each player is going to ha ha have uh, kind of a duplicate of the circuit, so it's going to hold a, 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 a wire with corresponding values, A1, A2, A3, for the players. Okay, and what we want to do is to maintain an, an additive secret sharing invariant in the sense that the XOR of all these two uh, all these three values should be equal to the original value of the circuit of the uh, circuit A. Okay, so how are we going to do that? We kind of need to uh, propagate this invariant through the gates of the circuit. Okay, so if we start, for example, by a uh, linear XOR gate, then the propagation from inputs to outputs is uh, uh, kind of uh, easy because each player can just uh, XOR its uh, inputs and then the, this invariant, this uh, Linear additive secret sharing is propagated to the output. This is not very difficult to see. However, for AND gates, uh, maintaining the invariant is more difficult. Okay, and this actually requires the players uh, to communicate and to generate random bits. Okay? And for this, uh, Picnic employs some MPC in the head optimizations. In particular, remember that the prover actually does not really have to run an MPC protocol, it's, everything is virtual, so we, uh, actually m messages don't have to be sent. Uh, so what uh, we're going to do is basically uh, have the output value of PI depend only on the inputs, on its own inputs, and the inputs of PI plus one. Okay, so this is basically kind of the dependency graph among the players in the protocol. Okay, so let's again go uh, a bit deeper. So how, in particular, is the end gate implemented? Okay, so uh, the players ba will basically generate random bits. Correspondingly, we're going to denote them by R1, R2, and R3. Okay, and this is, this is uh, right, we kind of have to, to say how the players uh, kind of propagate this, uh, this invariant from input to output. We have to say what are the computations that they do. And... Uh, well, the computations are just given by these formulas, uh, respectively. And, uh, um, for example, let's assume that players, uh, uh, the views of players P1 and P2 are open. So now the uh, verifier knows the red and uh, green values. So we can actually check the consistency for the first equation. So because it only contains uh, red and, uh, and uh, green values. Okay, so finally, uh, I'm going to describe an additional optimization. So you can see that uh, the end gates blow, this, blow up the signature size because the players generate kind of a lot of randomness and they, they, they compute uh, additional states. Uh, so a final optimization is that player i is going to have, instead of generating the random seeds every time, is going to have just a short random uh, uh, seed and it's going to, uh, uh, to compute the random bits uh, using a pseudo-random uh, generator, a deterministic one. Okay, so now the view of each player in the signature only needs to include a short seed and, uh, instead of, uh, you know, this many random bits. Okay, so this uh, kind of shrinks the signature size, which is good. Okay, so finally I'm going to uh, get into the actually the, the multi-target attack and let's see how, how this works. 
Um, so let's uh, start by a very uh, simple overview. Let's consider, say, a picnic variant with 128 uh, bits of classical security. Okay, so let's assume that the attacker is given a signature that contains, say, 219 uh, partial MPC runs. Okay, so um, each of these runs exposes, remember, two uh, of the three player views, vir these virtual players, and it, in particular, it contains uh, two uh, random 128-bit seeds. And in particular, uh, the third seed the, of the unopened player is not exposed. Okay, and it is easy, kind of easy to see, um, not from what I described, but uh, it's not very difficult uh, to see that if uh, uh, this third seed is actually exposed, then it is easy to compute the signing key. Okay, so this third seed cannot be exposed. Okay, so here's a very trivial attack, att attack attempt. So given some run, out of the 219, we're going to guess this unknown uh, seed, okay? But this has complexity to the, the 128 because the seed is 128 bits uh, long, so this is not very efficient. Um, this is not a really a valid attack. Um, so let's uh, try something maybe more useful. We're going to try multi-target attack. And what, what do I mean by this? So remember that we have 219 run, runs available, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, guess the seed of some unopened player in one of these 219 runs. Okay, and this, uh, um, in this case, we actually have 219 targets, and the uh, complexity of the attack drops proportionally. Okay, so we're kind of making progress, and we, this is kind of al already looks like an attack. However, there is a kind of a problem here, because how do we actually detect that we guessed right? Okay, how do we know that we guessed some seed? Uh, how do we know that it matches some seed of an unopened player? Okay, in fact, this should be, in, in kind of intuitively, it should be impossible because the uh, MPC protocol should protect the privacy of the unopened player. So this kind of does not seem uh, uh, to be possible. However, there is a small subtlety that kind of makes a big difference here. And the subtlety is that the MPC promises to protect the inputs of the players and not the random bits that they generate. Okay, and this kind of uh, subtlety makes a big difference here. And let's see in practice how, this, uh, how uh, we can actually uh, compute random bits that, uh, uh, that uh, on the unopened player generates. So let's assume again that P1 and P2 are opened. Okay, so we know all the uh, red and uh, green values, and we want to determine the, this R3, this random bit that was produced by the third player. So let's focus on the two and the second equation here. Remember, we know the red and uh, green values. Okay, and, and uh, initially, it seems like we cannot do this because there exist some additional green values here that, uh, that get in the way. However, let us assume now that A2 equals B2 equals zero. And remember, we know that when this occurs because we know the green values. And in this case, actually, all these terms cancel out. And we can then, in this case, we can just factor out R3 as a simple uh, linear combination of C2 and R2. Okay, so we can actually compute with these random bits. Okay, so now I can tell you how to actually detect this match by uh, guess seed and the uh, seed of an unopened player. Okay, we just for each run in the signature, what we're going to do is we're going to derive the PRG bits that are produced by the unowned open player, just as I have sh shown you in the last so slide, and we derive these strings, we sort them in the table, and now we're going to make a guess for the seed, we're going to compute the PRG on this uh, seed, and we're going to search this table. Okay, so this is already an efficient process, and uh, actually, we can generalize this given some S signatures signed by one, by one or by many users, then the complexity uh, ideally drops uh, proportionally. Okay, because we, again, we have many targets. Okay, actually, in practice, it turns out the attack is more complicated than that. I won't have time to get into details, but the problem basically is that remember, in order to determine this value of R3 for the end gates, we can only. Uh, 
deduce that if a2 equals b2 equals 0, but the view of each player in each run is different. And this is a problem. And why is this a problem? Uh, because uh, we actually can compute different PRG output bits uh, for the unopened player in each run. So we don't get these nice strings. We get kind of these strings with unknown values. And we cannot sort these strings. Okay, and this is a problem. And uh, we kind of have to optimize the attack in order to, uh, uh, to make this work. And I'm not going, I don't have time to, uh, to actually show you how this is done. Um, but uh, basically, the main idea here is that uh, random bits are reused in the circuit, and we can actually extract more randomness out of the circuit. And it turns out that these optimizations that we do are relevant for uh, maybe additional attack scenarios uh, on related protocols. Again, uh, details are in the paper. And if you look at the like, kind of the final numbers of our attacks, uh, let's say on 100. 28-bit uh, uh, variant of picnic, then you can see that the time is much smaller than 2 to the 128. And actually, we get an improved attack when, in the case, all the signatures are signed with the uh, same key. Again, details are in the paper. OK, and finally, similar weaknesses turn out to exist in related MPC protocols. In particular, uh, uh, protocol uh, uh, presented by Katz et al. at CCS 218 that was actually integrated into the newest version of PICNIC, PICNIC uh, 2.0. Um, okay, so it turns out that uh, kind of this uh, weakness, this hidden weakness is, uh, is not just common to PICNIC. So how do we fix this? Uh, the fix is actually quite simple. I mean, when you know all the details, the fix is quite simple. Uh, the fix is uh, basically you have to solve the PRG. So uh, when you s basically when you add a salt when computing the random bits in the PRG, this kind of forces the attacker to choose the salt, and it forces the attacker kind of to focus only on one target. Instead of having many targets, each time the attacker evaluates this PRG, he has to focus only on one target. And this, basically, uh, this is basically the fix. OK, so let me conclude this talk. So Picnic is a new and promising post-quantum uh, signature scheme with a lot of room for improvements. Uh, and we devised a multi-target attack on Picnic. And this, this is quite unusual. As you have seen, it requires kind of a careful uh, analysis of the internal components of Picnic. And uh, an efficient attack actually requires optimization. So I think that the, mo the most high-level conclusion here is that Picnic optimizes for practical use what is uh, traditionally considered as theoretical cryptography. However, when you make these optimizations, you kind of have to be careful in order to avoid these uh, so-called real-world attacks. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Itay. So we have t time for some questions. Yeah, Serge. Uh, please uh, either use the microphone on the side, or I can give you mine. So I wonder if, uh, is it working? Yes. Is the salt uh, affecting the performance of Picnic by enlarging a signature? Uh, it, yes, it does enlarge your signature. But actually, this, the salt, I mean, um, you embed some kind of uh, initial salt into the signature. And then from this initial salt, you can actually generate the salts for all the runs in, uh, in a deterministic way. So the signature is not blown up by uh, very much. So actually, the, the performance penalty for this is not very big. Um, so I'm wondering, some of those optimizations uh, were you know, like using pseudorandom seeds. In theory, I guess, uh, you know, in the MPC setting, it, it's probably okay to use pseudorandom seeds as long as I don't reveal my randomness. So some of those weaknesses, were they predicted by theory? And then namely, if you would say, okay, here is a random oracle model, here is a bound on the random oracle model, I can model PRG as a random so, oracle. So there is a, an actually, and there was an actually a, a security proof for the initial version of, of Picnic. And the security proof uh, kind of missed this attack because you kind of have to, again, look into the details and know that this attack is possible and add kind of, uh, you know, there is an additional bound on the adversary's Good. advantage. So there was kind of this term missing in one of the equations. And uh, I mean, in, 
I mean, so it is easy so kind of to, to correct analysis. this proof. Right. Uh, but again, you, are, you kind of have to, uh, right. to, to know that this is actually possible in order to, to, to uh, embed this uh, term correctly. But at least in, in theory, I just yeah. want to make sure if it's a theory. Yeah, problem. yeah, yeah. It, there is a proof. There is an actual proof of uh, picnic security and the random oracle model. Yeah? So, but I'm saying if you're saying there was a mistake in the proof. Like yeah, a, there know, was a mistake. Subtle, but you're saying if the proof was done correctly, and you would do the translation, it would account for this kind of e attack. Exactly, yes. Right, so this, in this case, it's not like a hacky optimization, it's just a mistake in the proof. No, no, it's uh, just a mistake in the proof, yes. Okay. Any more questions? If not, let's thank Ita again. Thank you. Thank you.